everybody, it's Eugene here and welcome to another video. So today what I'm going to be doing is working inside of Pharozone 3D and I'm going to be creating a virtual tour. And in a previous video, what I did was created a virtual tour, which was in the Pharo Scene software and they call it Scene to Go. It's Scene number two, Go. And I attached some media like photos and that sort of thing. And so I'm going to be doing the same thing, except this time it's in Pharozone 3D. And I'm going to show you that it allows you to do a couple of things that you can't really do inside of Pharo Scene. So Pharo Zone software, as you know, is software that is produced by Pharo and it's typically targeted towards the forensics market. It's for drawing. It's for doing different types of analysis. If you're doing like vehicle crashes, momentum analysis, bullet trajectories, and even bloodstain pattern analysis. So let's get started. What I'm going to be doing is importing some uh, laser scanner data. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to the home tab and I'm just going to import. Okay, so I've got some data here. I'm just, this is an E57 file. Now, when I click on it, uh, it may not know what the units might be. Now, just want to say this. This is not from a Ferro scanner. This is from Recon 3D. So this is an iPhone app. And that's one of the things I like about software that plays nice with other types of modalities, other types of scanners. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a photogrammetry project, if it's a structured light scanner, or even a different terrestrial laser scanner, it's able to bring in the data. And so that's pretty cool. So you'll see where it's landed right now. And, you know, I sort of have this, uh, it's not really squared away or anything like that, but that's okay. I can work with this like this. Um, there is a way to align this. If I go to a top down view, you know what? I'll show it to you anyway, just so people know what, the, what to do here. If I go to the point cloud tab and there's a setting, so it says cloud tools and I click on that further down, it says cloud positioning tools. So uh, there's a couple of other things, options here. You'll see this is color, lighting and options, brightness, contrast, point size. Sometimes I'll stick that up to two just to give it a little bit more, look like a, a little bit denser when you get closer. But what I want to do here is go to cloud positioning tools at the bottom and you'll see here that I have X, Y, and Z. So that's basically the translation all from this point here. And then it gives me the yaw, the pitch and the roll. So those three, three things are what I can adjust. Now, if the scan is already level because the device that you have, like a terrestrial laser scanner has an inclinometer or it has some kind of a leveling device, then there's no reason to change that again. Then that's not what I want to do is here. So here you can see it's fairly level and I'm, I'm not going to rotate it that way. I just want to rotate it so that it's squared in the view here. So I'm just going to use the yaw. So yaw, pitch and roll, you have to think of like an aircraft. So if an aircraft's flying, the yaw is going to be what the rudder does. Okay. The pitch is what the uh, elevators do. And then the uh, roll would be the, uh, the, uh, what are they called? I forgot what they're called. Ailerons, that's what they are. So I'm just going to adjust the yaw here and I'm just going to make little translations. Another thing you should note is the arrows on either side of this field. The ones on the right are for small increments and the ones on the left are for very large increments. And that's typical throughout the uh, software. So let me put this back here on the back like that. Uh, let me go one more, one more, and a few more adjustments here. So I'm just going to do this roughly. Let's say I just wanted it like this. It's not exactly square. I guess I could tweak it a little bit more to say like this back wall is aligned. Sure. Why not? So now that I've got that, you'll notice that I have my grid here. It's up at the door level. It's not really at the floor level. Now, all of this that I'm doing right now is more just for me for working. Uh, there's things that you can do. And a quick thing you can do is it says elevate the pick point. So if I click on this, any point that I click on, like wherever it might be, it's going to bring that point and basically raise it or lower it to the zero, the Z equals zero inside of the coordinate system. So if I just pick on this point here, okay, you'll now see that the axes here fall on this point and the bottom of the floor is pretty much level with the grid. So that's cool. Now, I don't want to see this uh, axis here. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go to the Enviro tab ground and I'm going to shut off the axes and even the grid. I don't even need that anymore. So we'll leave it like that. Okay. So I've got this, uh, this, uh, mannequin that's on the ground. I've got some evidence markers here and maybe there's some things that I want to do where I want to attach photos. I want to create some preset views and things like this. And then once I have it all packaged, then I'll create the zone to go project. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got some photos that I want to attach. There are some preset views that I want to put in here, and there may be even some witness views, maybe some bullet trajectories. I don't know. We're just going to put a mishmash of stuff in here and then just see what happens, see how it looks. Okay, so to start off with, um, what we're going to do is go into the zone to go. So you have to go to the home tab and then go to zone to go. And you'll see that I have this little menu that pops up and I've got some options here. Okay. So one is add a simple annotation and then one is a file reference. So if I want to attach a photo or something like that, this one here is create a panoramic image. This is for a scan manager and stuff like that. Um, you don't need this one here because we're not really using the Faro scene data. So it's really these ones here that we're interested in. So to start with, I'm going to do a file reference and a file reference will allow me to attach some images or some photographs. So I've got this hat that's here. So I'm going to click on that. So I'm going to go ahead and find some photographs and I need photographs of the, the hat. So I've got one here that I want. So I'm going to click on that and it says, Hey, where do you want to put it? So I'm just going to put it, maybe I'll put it like right on the hat here. I'll just click there. It's snapping to the point cloud. And then you have to choose like a direction for this thing. Uh, it's a little marker. I'm just going to click it this way. Now there's some things that I can do to, uh, there's some settings here that I can do to uh, adjust here. Uh, I think it's here. It says toggle standing which I could do. So this, it'll, instead of having it on the ground, it'll actually be standing up, but I also want to change the size. I maybe change it to 0.1 and I'll go toggle standing and you'll see now it's something like this. Okay. So I can, uh, I can move this over maybe like that. Okay. Let me just have a look here. Okay. That, that didn't go where I wanted. Let's say something like this and go over a bit more and then I'm going to raise it up off the ground just like that. Okay. So it's, it's uh, a little icon that's just above the um, the hat here, and maybe I want to change the color, I don't know, to a bluish color or something like that. I don't know. That That's good enough. Okay, that's one. Let's do one more. There's a knife here. Let's do that one. Same idea. So I've got this knife. Okay, I'm going to go back here. File reference, and I've got a knife somewhere. Let's see, this one here maybe? Sure. Uh, maybe this one. I like that one. And same kind of thing. I'm just going to click on here, choose a direction, and I'm going to choose toggle standing. And yeah, sure, that's close enough. And I'm also going to change the color to this color here so that they're all the same. I like that. I've got a shoe that's out here. So let's do this one. And uh, you can see you can move pretty quick here. So the file reference, I'm going to pick a shoe, maybe this one here. It's further out. Ah, this one here, it's closer in. It's more interesting. Maybe I'm going to click, set the direction, toggle standing and change the color just as before. All right. So we got that. Um, uh, there's a couple more, whatever. Um, I guess I could do one more over here, but uh, these are, what's this, 32. So I'll do 32. Why not? I'll do this one here and I need 32. It looks like it's a cartridge case. So do that. Click, point. We're going to toggle standing so it's up and again, change the color. Okay, great. So I think those are all, all there. I'm not going to do bother with the other two. I did it four times, so you should be able to rewind and uh, see how I did that. No problem. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I can actually close this. This will be saved in here. Um, but well, actually, a couple of things that I want to do. Let's say I want to get a specific view from this location. And uh, let's say something like this. Yeah, right about there. One thing I can do is it says um, that I can create a 360 panel from this position. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on that. Okay. Now you probably didn't hear that, but there's a little uh, shutter sound uh, that uh, that happens. And let's say I want to do one from down low or, or maybe from this position here. And what I'm going to do is create the panel uh, image, another one. And you see that there's a couple of snapshots that are here. So I'm, I'm collecting those right now. And uh, you can keep going and create four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It doesn't matter. It basically records the camera position and it'll hold that 360 position. And those are some of the panel views that it's going to keep inside of the virtual tour, inside of the zone to go. Next, what I'm going to do is I think I want to add a, I think I want to add a witness view. So to go to the witness view, if you go to an animation and you go to the drop down here, which says total view, there's an option for it here. Okay. So it says witness. So if I click on that, I can place a witness, let's say over here. It's just like a, a, a figure of a person. I'll click and then I'll, you know, have it point to looking at the uh, person that's on the ground. And there you go. So you've got it. It's snapped the point cloud in the right spot. All is good here. And if you look here, uh, let's see, eye height. So it gives me the eye height of the camera is 1.52. If I need to adjust that, I can make it a little bit bigger. 
And I'm going to add one more, but let's say there was a couple of witnesses. Maybe there was somebody back in this spot here. I'll just go back, create another witness, place them here, and then have them looking this way, like that. And this one's at 1.52 I height. So I've got a couple of witness views. I've got the uh, file references, which are the photographs. And maybe now I want to add a bullet trajectory or something like that. Why not? Let's do that. So let's say there was a bullet that went through the window here. Somebody shot at this guy and then it goes through here. So I'm going to go to the power tools and I'm going to click the bullet trajectory and I'm just going to start setting this up. I'm going to click on the, uh, let's say the, uh, the blinds here and I'm going to come back. I'll fix this in a second. Something like this. Okay. And uh, I might even just keep that. Why not? So it's something like this. Actually, what I'm going to do is I may shut off the cone. Um, I'll raise the uh, the bottom and say, you see some of these things get in the way. I'm going to move this off the screen here for a second. And I'm going to lift this up. Okay, like that. So now it's a little bit elevated. And the other thing that I can do is I think I'm going to shut off the cone. And I'll just keep the trajectory line. But with respect to the trajectory line, I think I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. Like that. And I'm also going to change the color, I think. I think I'm going to make the color. Let's make it a bright color. Why not? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. So here we have what's called the impact plane, uh, that, yeah, I could move it this way, uh, but you know what? I think I'm going to shut that off. It's just, uh, some other, th I'll do, I'll do bullet trajectories another day, not today, but there you go. You got a bullet trajectory that's going that way. And now we can see basically what, uh, what we're setting up here. Now you can also import things like you can import models and that sort of thing. So let's say, for example, there's a symbol library here. And in the symbol library, you can pick up things like cars, like people, uh, animals, props, and things like that. So there's a number of things that you can place, uh, into this. So, um, if I wanted to put a car in here or something, I guess I could. Uh, it could even be if I search for a motorcycle or something like that. I guess I could do that. Uh, maybe a motorcycle. Let's do a motorcycle just for the heck of it. Maybe somebody was working on their uh, their motorcycle project here. So I'm going to put that like this, and I'm going to rotate it like that. Why not? Right? Who wouldn't want a motorcycle? There you go. That looks pretty good. So we've got a number of things going on. Let's create the zone to go at this point. Let's make it happen so that we can package everything together. So in order to do that, let's go to the home screen. We're going to click on the zone to go again. So it comes back up. And um, so we've got a couple of things going on. There's like witness one, witness two has been added automatically. We have all the images and we have the two views that are here. So I'm going to just begin by going export zone to go. So I'm going to click on this. And it's going to ask me where I want to place this. So I'm just going to put this maybe on my desktop and go select. And you'll see that it starts to automatically process. So basically it's collecting all of the images that I put in there. It's going to create the pano images so that it renders them out as 360 images and then packages them all into the zone to go. So once this is done, another menu will pop up and that'll allow me to initiate the project. So I can see already it's copying all the files to the desktop or a desktop folder. And so once it's done that, I'll be able to launch this. And it's almost there. Okay. So it looks like it did it. Now it gives me this window where it says, you know, do you want to just launch the zone to go or open the export folder? Um, you could do either. I'm just going to launch it from here and let's see what happens. So it looks exactly like scene to go. It's basically what it is. And you can see that I've got a preview over here. So I'm going to click on this and you see that it's sort of, uh, moving. It's around the extents of the point cloud. And if I click on this here, I'm going to get into one of the views and I'm going to go around and there you go. So you can see that I've got the trajectory. I've got the motorcycle. I've got a bunch of, uh, labels here that I can look at for photographs. So if I click on this one and it says open the link. Okay, you'll see that I get the proper link here, and which is kind of cool. Now, I also have the other witness positions, and actually there's one up here too. This one was kind of high. I guess I made it a little bit high, but I was looking down like this, so you can see that there too, looking at it from a different view. And if I go to this witness view, I just have to click on the top here. And I'm going to turn around, and you can see that I can zoom in and out. I can see all my labels. Let's check the cartridge case one here. Is this one working? Yeah, that one's working too. And you could actually attach multiple images to these things. 
um, or at least you can in scene. I should have tried it here actually, but um, I believe you can. And uh, yeah, there's some other things you can do in terms of visibility and such like that. But, you know, there's different layers. In this case, if you wanted labels, which were very far away not to appear, then, you know, measurements or even labels, I could turn this down. So for example, if I go to five meters, you'll see that some of the labels that were there disappeared at five uh, because they're beyond five meters. They won't show up here. Also, see where this one is. Okay, that one is in this corner, but now that's here. This is the label that's up here. If I turn this down to five meters, you'll see that anything that's uh, greater than five meters, those particular uh, spots or those hot spots, if you want to call them for the views, they disappear, they drop off. So that's pretty cool. It lets you do a bunch of stuff here. Uh, you can look around. It's a quick way of packaging a number of different things on top of the point cloud, like photographs, like bullet trajectories and other things so that you can see it all inside of 3D. I think it's a pretty cool option for a lot of people when they want to deliver their data uh, that's packaged with other stuff. And you can also put PDF documents, you can put audio, you can put video, you can put a whole number of things here. So that's a quick video on how to use Faro Zone, Zone to Go. I showed you how to import point clouds, how to attach images, how to get witness views and panoramic images. Hopefully that helps you out. Uh, thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.